Hello again, this is UML Operator. Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna focus on early adopters in my first sequence diagram. I'll try to make this video as short as possible, but we have a lot of ground to cover, all right? We will produce a longer version for more advanced users in later sessions. So sequence diagrams are a type of UML interaction diagram, right? So it's used to show how objects, elements, communicate with each other through messages to achieve specific functionality and behavior. There are two types of interaction diagrams. One are sequence diagrams, and there are many in Model Builder for you to choose from. And the other type is communication diagrams, right? We're gonna to touch on communication diagrams, but our focus is on sequence diagrams in particular. As in previous episodes for my firsts, let's go to our sequence diagrams namespace. So we created this blank project right here, nothing really in it. And we're going to build a starter sequence diagram. Matter of fact, I want to use the one that has reply messages for this conversation. So we're in our, our parent fold diagram. And again, you can always change where you want to place things. I'm going to cancel out and we're going to put it right here. All right. So then we're going to hit create model. <laughs> it's building it and let's go ahead and open it. All right. So here we go. We have a sequence diagram that we can talk to as we're going forward. And as in previous videos, if I hit the space bar here, let's go ahead and insert a document element. And I want to put it right here. I'm going to double click it, make it blank, go back over here, control A to copy everything, control C, and go back over and paste it. And this way we have this document that we can use to help our learning as we're going forward. And we'll, we'll just steal the name here, borrow it. All right, I'm going to take the whole thing. You'll create your own notes, your own learning documents for this. And let's just go ahead, hit function key two, and then paste this name in here. And I want to make it a little wider and hit save. All right, well, let's go ahead and break this down. So sequence diagrams are elements. These are the elements. They're also objects. If we double click, you can see this is a sequence and then Sparks named it object A. So these are instances of classes. They represent a particular state and time within your design artifact, right? So Elements and actors, and actors can be humans, just don't be confused by the stick figure here. An actor can be a machine, all right? The vertical axis, and these are called lifelines in sequence models, they represent time, while the horizontal references, these arrows as they're going back and forth, they represent different element interactions. So these elements are interacting with each other. That's the reason why it's called an interaction diagram. So in this episode, we're focused on sequence diagrams and you'll hear me reference it as an interaction diagram. And we use interaction diagrams to represent behavior of specific use cases while det detailing the communication flow between the systems. This is particularly useful when understanding the interaction in complex scenarios, such as distributed systems, but we're gonna keep this very simple in this episode. Let's go ahead and make sure we save this. We've got an asterisk right here. We hit Control S and now it's saved. We don't need this document open, so we're gonna go ahead and close that. And let's minimize our model builder example, and let's create a new package in here, our own package, Let's call it support system sequence example. We're going to create a diagram. We're going to hit OK. Now we get this dialog box that pops up and we're going to go to UML behavioral. And that's where sequence diagrams are. 
We're just going to choose the top one. You can play around with these other examples that are here. We're just going to choose sequence as our diagram type. Let's go ahead and create it. Now we have a blank diagram within this namespace, this package right here. Now in this blank diagram, we have the sequence diagram toolbox. So we have all the tools we need to start modeling. And there are multiple ways to create sequence diagrams. There's manual where you're just simply bringing in your actor and your lifelines. You can bring in boundary, controllers, entities, and other elements that are here. That's manual. Or you can auto build these using use case scenarios. And we're not going to talk about that in this video. I cover it in the channel in more advanced videos. So we we'll focus on manual aspect of creating a sequence diagram. Other ways for creating sequence diagrams or interaction diagrams is using code, real code, either from your integrated development environment or through Sparks Enterprise Architect. You can also use AI to generate sequence diagrams and interaction diagrams, but that's very advanced subjects and we'll cover those much later. All right, so let's just focus on building out our first sequence diagram. All right, so let's bring in our first element. It is going to be an actor. You can select it. You can see the mouse is holding it and I can just click anywhere I want. And we brought in a lifeline in this sequence diagram for actor one. And actor one could be a customer, uh, it could be some other user, it can even be a machine. It could be an artificial intelligence virtual assistant. But let's just keep focused on actor. Let's bring in another element. We're gonna bring in a lifeline, right? And this time you see it come in as an object. Let's double click this. You can see this sequence. This is an object, all right? Let's bring in two more lifelines, all right? Let's bring in one and let's bring in two. And then let's start drawing some modeling, some interactions between these elements. So we're gonna draw a connector from actor one to object one. And if you select the element, you see at this up arrow, you can hold down the left mouse button, drag and drop it till you see the dashed lines and let go. And we have our first connector. Let's go ahead and double click this or just select it. It just takes us to properties faster. And in fact, let's move properties to the right of our diagram, fully expand them so we can talk to them. And I'm gonna make this a little smaller and this a little wider. And there we go, all right? So when we're looking at the properties for any other elements like diagrams or objects, property window looks like this. Go to actor properties, here's all the properties for this UML type called actor. If I select on this connector, the property window changes. It changes to support messaging. These, this is a message event from actor one to object one. And you have, you can embody the message here. You can select from operations. We'll cover that in a more advanced session. You can have specific parameters for the message event, arguments. You get into the return value, whether it's void or some other value, assign, stereotypes, alias. You can get down into sequence expressions such as conditions and constraints. You have control flows. This is a synchronous line with a solid arrow. We can change this to an asynchronous type flow. We can hit the save icon here, or we can just simply click outside of the properties and Sparks will save it for us, all right? So I go back to it and I wanna change it back to synchronous, I'm gonna select out here in the diagram, auto saves it for us. All right, so we have a connector event here. We go ahead and select it again, and you can say, well, what's this message here? And I'm just gonna say contacts and use any convention you want. If you're just doing high level brainstorming and just talking about the interactions between systems, use human active voice, contact agent. 
you. That's not code. Select out here, contact it. It saved it for us. Now contact agent is this message event. And the, I'm not going to put parameters or arguments or anything else in here. We're just going to do a very simple sequence. So let's draw out the rest of this very quickly. All right. So just to, when you're brainstorming, you can model in sequence or even communication diagrams as fast as you can talk. For example, hey, we want to contact the agent. The agent is going to look up the customer or the actor. The agent then is going to go ahead and call this other system. This system is going to abstract or call this other system. And this system is going to return something based on this service call here, this message event back to object two. And then object two is going to return something back to this object. And in this case, this object is an agent system. We could rename this CRM or anything we want. And then the system is returning something back. So as fast as you can talk, you can model. You'll notice as well as we were drawing these message events here, it auto numbered them for us. And if you don't want numbers, you go to the start tab, you go to preferences, you go to sequence, and you can show sequence numbering. You can turn that off and those are now gone. I want them on for this demonstration. I don't always use them, but it just makes it more human readable. Now, Watch what happens when we change one of these to an asynchronous event. We're going to take object two and this message event here, and we're going to change it to asynchronous. And then we're going to, you can hit save, or you can just focus outside and save it for us, right? And then what we're going to do is make this a return, right? And I'm going to hit save, and now this is a return, right? What this is stating here is that object two is going to fire off a message event to object three, and then it's going to wait. It could wait for five milliseconds. It could wait for five days, right? And you can put all those conditions and constraints in your modeling as you're going forward. We're going to make this a return and hit save. And then we're going to have object one, as soon as it finally gets everything that it needs, whether it's 5,000 milliseconds or five days, it's going to get back to the stick figure actor. Let's go ahead and hit save. Now, in this case, we may have long running processes where this object does not want to keep the session going and we don't want the customer or whatever this actor is waiting so we will change this to a synchronous, asynchronous event. We're going to go ahead and hit save, All right? Then we're going to come down here. Matter of fact, let me do it right now. We're going to right click in here and reload the diagram, All right? Look what happened to the element. There is a break. Means that this could fire off at time one, and may not get a response back until time 150, right? Whatever those values are. So when you're modeling, you're able to say, well, the customer wants the client that's sponsoring the effort, they want this actor here to get something back in 3,000 milliseconds or 5,000 milliseconds. So we're gonna change this back to synchronous, right? We're going to reload the diagram, and there we go. This cus this actor here is waiting. I keep wanting to call a customer, is waiting. So you then become constrained on the amount of time that this event fires off, because it may be a microservice or some service-oriented event, message event, where it's fire and forget. It fires it off, looks for requests, and then it waits for a response. It could be sitting on a bus architecture, listening to it and waiting and then fire back up and all sorts of considerations when you're modeling. We're gonna go ahead and change this back to synchronous. There we go, it is back. We're going to right click in here again, reload the diagram, all right? So that's your sequence diagram. You're showing time 
and then interactions. So if your time here has to be, maybe your constraint is less than 5,000 milliseconds, and then we'll just go ahead and save this constraint here, all of this needs to add up to less than 5,000 milliseconds to meet whatever your performance requirements are. So sequence diagrams, interaction diagrams become very important when you're brainstorming your architecture, when you're testing existing architecture and more. All right, so we did our first sequence diagram and I said I was gonna touch on communication diagrams. So let me do that very quickly. We've run out of time. I'll cover communication diagrams in another session. But essentially what we're going to do is we use class elements from our architectural models and we can bring those in as object instances into a sequence diagram. This is the exact same sequence diagram as we did manually here, except we're using class elements. We build out a communication diagram. This is an interaction diagram. I'll show you how to deal with this in later sessions. These are generalized instances of each one of our class elements, our building blocks. We have our actor. We're using asynchronous and synchronous calls right here in order to accomplish different return types that are coming in and more. So we'll cover communication diagrams in another session, but in this session here, we were focused on sequence diagrams as an interaction diagram. So I hope this, this session was helpful for you. There's all so much to cover and I could spend hours on this. We use this every day in architectural design, uh, code analysis and much more. So we'll cover that in this channel. So I look forward to getting to those subjects with you. And until the next episode, happy modeling.